This week we're looking at how to film slow motion and later on why we might choose to use it. So I think a good place to start is looking at what we're actually filming. Plenty of shots won't actually look that different in slow motion. It's all about movement. So sports are well suited for slow motion, water splashes, and of course, things being destroyed. Now, filmmakers have built on this idea by finding lots of creative ways to use slow motion to support the story they're trying to tell. But we'll get into that after we've covered the basics. So a regular film camera records motion like this, 24 pictures or frames per second. But if you dig into the menus of most modern cameras, you can often choose a higher frame rate, like 60 frames a second or 120. Now, when we stretch out all of those extra frames, it takes longer to watch what we've recorded. One second of recording lasts more than two seconds, hence slow motion. So we go from this to this. Now that was filmed on a Canon T3i at 60 frames a second, which is what I'll be using for this video, although there are a couple of shots from this drone which can film 120 frames a second, five times slower than normal speed. Now the last practical thing before we get into the creative is to think about light. Since we're recording more frames, we end up with a faster shutter speed, and so the sensor doesn't pick up as much light. Now daylight should be bright enough for most shots, but as it gets dark, it's gonna be harder and harder for the camera to record a clean image. So if we're shooting indoors or at night, we'll probably need to add artificial light, but be careful, some lights will flicker at higher frame rates, so make sure you test them out first. So there's the basics, now let's get to the important stuff. Slow motion has been used for all kinds of different scenes, and one that we've all seen is when time slows down. Nothing else seems to be important anymore, the character is awestruck. It's a visual representation of love at first sight, or just physical attraction. Now, using slow motion for these kind of scenes has become a bit of a cliche, so these days it's mostly just used for comedic effect. But even more common than that is to use slow motion to make an action scene a bit more epic. Most of these stunts will just be a blur if they happen in real time, so slowing things down gives us a chance to appreciate how impressive this is. Plus, I do think there's something inherently majestic about slow motion when it's used in the right context. Now, I think it's interesting to look at how filmmakers approach the topic of death in films. When an insignificant character is killed in a film, the audience typically doesn't care that much. We don't know much about these characters, sometimes they're completely anonymous, and it all happens very quickly. So when a significant character dies in a film, you'll notice it's handled very differently. Firstly, we've already got to know them throughout the film, but even during the scene where they die, the audience are usually given plenty of time to experience it. There might be close-ups so we can see how they feel. We might hear their final words, see them struggling to hold on. Or in many cases, they use slow motion. Now, of course, this isn't a rule. You don't have to follow this. But just think back to some of the character deaths that have hit you the hardest. Now, I'm guessing that they didn't happen as quickly as this. One of my favorite uses of slow motion is in Inception, where not only does the water look amazing in slow motion, but it's actually a central part of the story. Five minutes in the real world gives you an hour in the dream. And so throughout the film, we go back to this slow motion shot, which reminds us that the real world is much slower than the dream world that the characters are living in. Now we've seen that slow motion can be used to heighten the intensity of romantic attraction or adrenaline fueled action, but it can also work with fear. In this scene, the character sees what she thinks is the highly dangerous killing machine from the previous movie. Now, I think the slow motion really helps to punctuate this moment. It helps us to see just how terrified she is. But we shouldn't give it all the credit. Most of the fear that we see comes from her reaction, her body language, face expressions, and the fact that she actually turns back towards the people who moments before she was trying to escape from. That tells you a lot. The point is that the slow motion is really only supporting what was already there in the script and from the actors. And that's true for all of these examples. Now, one thing you'll notice if you watch those films is that most of them still use sound in the slow motion shots. So when I'm recording slow motion, I like to record the sound either with an on-camera microphone or with a separate audio recorder. 
and then I slow down the audio to match the video, which will also lower the pitch. Now of course that doesn't always sound the best, it's often worth recording our own sound effects, and have a listen to 300 if you need some inspiration for sound designing slow motion scenes. So last of all, I just want to say, be careful with slow motion. Since most modern cameras can film slow motion, it's tempting to use it just because it looks cool, whether it supports the story or not. I think it's like pepper. Sure, you can put it on any food and it will spice it up, but that doesn't mean we should put it on everything. But who am I to say that? Really, it's up to you and your tastes. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next week. By the way, if you'd like to use this music for any of your projects, then there's a link in the description which will get you 50% off this track and four of my other songs. Okay, thanks, bye.